Hello students, this is Perio, Chapter 15, Lecture 1. There are three major categories of periodontitis. The 1999 AAP classification of periodontal diseases and conditions subdivides periodontitis into three major categories. Each of the three major categories has two or more subcategories. See page 254, figure 15.1 for more information. Chronic periodontitis is the most common form of periodontitis. It is a bacterial infection resulting in inflammation within the supporting tissues of the teeth progressive destruction of the periodontal ligament, and loss of supporting alveolar bone. Chronic periodontitis is characterized by inflammation within the supporting tissues of the teeth, progressive destruction of the periodontal ligament, and loss of supporting alveolar bone. See page 257, figure 15.3 for more information. Chronic periodontitis results in irreversible loss of attachment and bone. It is the most frequently occurring form of periodontitis. Characteristics are, it is most commonly seen in adults over 35 years of age. It can occur in children and adolescents. It is initiated by dental plaque biofilm, but the host response plays an essential role in tissue destruction. The disease progresses at a slow to moderate rate. Attachment loss may occur in one area of a tooth attachment, on several teeth, or on the entire dentition. Signs and symptoms of chronic periodontitis are swelling, redness, gingival bleeding, periodontal pockets, bone loss, tooth mobility, suppuration, which is pus. Warning signs to use when you are educating a patient is to look out for red, swollen gingiva, bleeding during brushing, bad taste in the mouth, bad breath, sensitive teeth, loose teeth, or pus. Pain is usually not a symptom. This may be why. Patients do not seek treatment early in the disease and patients do not follow through with treatment after the disease is diagnosed. Clinical appearance is not a reliable indicator of the presence or severity of chronic periodontitis. The periodontal tissues may exhibit pronounced changes in appearance or they may exhibit minimal changes in appearance. Here's an example of a highly visible change. Here is an example of minimally visible changes. Remember, clinical appearance is not a reliable indicator of disease. The gingival tissue may be pale pink and have an almost normal looking appearance. Health or disease, minimal visual changes, the clinical appearance of this tissue suggests health. However, when assessed with a probe, a deep pocket reveals bone loss on the mesial surface of the canine. Signs of chronic periodontitis, loss of attachment, relocation of the junctional epithelium to the tooth root, destruction of fibers of the gingiva, destruction of the PDL, loss of alveolar bone support from around the tooth. Changes that occur in the alveolar bone are significant because progressive bone loss eventually results in loss of the tooth. Here are some images that show bone loss in periodontitis. You can see these on page 256 of your book, and you can see the characteristics of chronic periodontitis in the box 15.1. A periodontal pocket is clinical evidence of attachment loss. Example, 
loss of attachment. This is figure 15.5 on page 258. Same example, the tissue is lifted away to reveal severe bone loss. Bleeding from a soft tissue wall is a sign of disease. Exudate or suppuration is an accumulation of pus. Pus represents dead white blood cells and cur can occur in any infection, including periodontal disease. Pressure with the clinician's finger on the gingiva reveals exudate from the gingival tissue. Here's a recap. Chronic periodontitis is a bacterial infection resulting in inflammation within the supporting tissues of the teeth. Chronic periodontitis is the most frequently occurring form of periodontitis. The appearance of the gingival tissues is not a reliable indicator of the presence or the severity of periodontitis. Periodontitis is most common in adults over 35, can occur in children and young adults, and the host response plays an essential role in its pathogenesis. Disease progresses at a slow to moderate rate and irreversible destruction of all areas of the affected periodontium. Caution, remember, 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 clinical appearance is not a reliable indicator of chronic periodontitis. Do not make a diagnosis by clinical appearance alone. Do not tell the patient that their gums are healthy by appearance alone. The gingival tissue may be pale pink and have an almost normal looking appearance and still have chronic periodontitis. You must use a probe and x-rays. This is figure 15.8 on page 260 of your textbook. It is an example of firm nodular fibrotic tissue changes in chronic periodontitis. Here is another image of the same firm nodul nodular fibrotic tissue. There can also be pronounced changes in appearance. This is an image of the palatal gingiva in a patient with chronic periodontitis. Note the calculus deposits on the tooth surface and the rolled gingival margins. Clinical signs on the lingual aspect usually are not as evident as those seen on the facial aspect of the gingiva. Chronic periodontitis can also show blunting of the interdental papillae and recession of the gingival margins. This is an image showing heavy plaque biofilm in an individual with chronic periodontitis. These are pronounced changes in appearance in the tissues on a patient with chronic periodontitis. There can also be minimal changes in appearance in the tissues. Before and after periodontal therapy. This is case one. You can see the rolled tissue around the gingiva of tooth number nine. And this is more normal looking tissue on number nine after treatment. Before, on case two, notice the red margins of 8, 7, 8, 9, and 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27. And this is the appearance of the tissues after treatment. Case 3, you can see the enlarged interdental papillae, and now they're more normal in appearance. Chronic periodontitis results in irreversible loss of attachment and bone. It is the most frequently occurring form of periodontitis. Clinical appearance is not a reliable indicator of the presence or severity of chronic periodontitis. Do I need to repeat that again? It may exhibit pronounced changes or minimal changes. Features of chronic periodontitis. 
The prevalence and severity increases with age. The progress may be slow and have bursts of rapid progression. It can be localized or generalized and modified by local or systemic factors. Bacteria alone are not sufficient for progression from gingivitis to chronic periodontitis. Onset and severity of chronic periodontitis are determined by interaction between the plaque biofilm and the host immune response. Disease, extent, severity, and progression. The amount of destruction characterized by number of sites that have experienced tissue destruction is called the extent of disease. Extent of destruction in chronic periodontitis. Localized is 30% or less of sites. Generalized is more than 30% of sites in the mouth. Disease progression, can, the change is the change or advancement of periodontal destruction. For example, how does the amount of attachment loss today compare with that seen three months ago? Is it the same, somewhat worse, or much worse? In most individuals, chronic periodontitis progresses at a slow to moderate rates. But periods of rapid tissue destruction occasionally may occur. Chronic periodontitis does not progress at an equal rate in all affected sites in a mouth. Some disease sites may remain unchanged for a period of time. Other sites may progress rapidly. Seriousness of the disease is determined by the rate of disease progression over time and the response of tissues to treatment. Disease severity may be described as slight or mild to severe. Slight is no more than one to two millimeters of clinical attachment lost. Moderate is three to four and severe is five millimeters or more of clinical attachment loss. Treatment considerations for chronic periodontitis. Initial therapy. Consult with a physician if systemic risk factors are present, such as smoking, uncontrolled diabetes, systemic diseases, stress, or medications. Treatment goals include control of bacterial plaque to a level compatible with periodontal health altering or eliminating contributing risk factors, arresting disease progression, and preventing recurrence of disease. The long-term outcome of periodontal therapy depends on patient compliance with self-care and periodontal maintenance, recall appointments, at appropriate intervals. Not all disease sites respond equally to therapy. Characteristics of disease sites not responding successfully are continued inflammation, increasing attachment loss, and high levels of plaque. Recurrent chronic periodontitis. New signs of destructive periodontitis that reappear after therapy because the disease was not adequately treated or the patient did not practice adequate self-care or both. Under the 1989 system, refractory periodontitis was a separate disease category. This is no longer the case. Refractory periodontitis in the 1999 disease classification refers to cases of chronic periodontitis that do not respond to periodontal therapy. There is continued loss of attachment at one or more sites. Even though therapy was appropriate and adequate, the patient practiced good self-care and the patient completed periodic maintenance visits. Chronic periodontitis is a bacterial infection resulting in inflammation within the supporting tissues of teeth. It is most frequently occurring, the most frequently occurring form of periodontitis. It is either localized or generalized, and the 
treatment goals are significant reduction in gingival inflammation, reduction of gingival plaque, and reduction in probing depth and prevention of further attachment loss. It is either recurrent or refractory. This concludes Perio Chapter 15, Lecture 1.